new grass rising in the hills, the cows loitering in the morning chill, a dozen or more old browns hidden in the shadows of the cottonwoods beside the stream bed. I go higher to where the road gives up and there's only a faint path strewn with lupin between the mountain oaks. I don't ask myself what I'm looking for. I didn't come for answers to a place like this. I came to walk on the earth, still cold, still silent, still ungiving, I've said to myself, although it greets me with last year's dead thistles and this year's hard spines, early blooming wild onions, the curling remains of spider's cloth. What did I bring to the dance? In my back pocket, a crushed letter from a woman I've never met, bearing bad news I can do nothing about. So I wander these woods half sightless, while a west wind picks up in the trees clustered above. The pines make a music like no other, rising and falling like a distant surf at night that calms the darkness before first light. Suffing, we call it, from Old English, no less. How weightless words are when nothing will do. Welcome. I am Saul Jimenez Sandoval. I'm the Dean of Arts and Humanities. <clears throat> it's truly an honor to have all of you here. It's a momentous day, a perfect day, weather-wise, poets present, poetry flowing in the air. It's a celebration of Phil Levine's poetry, of his legacy, of his memory, of his life, the relationships he built around uh, you, around the society, around our valley. The everyday was present in his life. The everyday was present in his poetry. And he helped us discover the jewels that make us the humans that we are. As poet laureate and professor emeritus, Phil Levine, is fundamental to our college. He is the cornerstone of our humanity and of our artistry. This is a celebration of his life and his gifts of vision, wit, and of course, humor. And, I'm, and in this celebration, there are key people who sustained his love of life and words. Fran, his wife, and his three sons, Mark, John, and Ted. We are here to celebrate the poet who in his words, quote, absurd fragments of eternity in the ordinary. It's so beautiful, <laughs> so warming. Now it's my privilege to welcome Provost Lynette Selesny. It was the resourcefulness and vision of the Provost that put this event in motion. It was her support that has been instrumental in making this event a reality. Please give her a warm welcome. Thank you very much, Dean Jimenez Sandoval. Very kind introdu introduction. On behalf of President Joseph Castro and his wife, Mary Castro, it is such an honor to be here today to welcome all of you and to celebrate Philip Levine's extraordinary life. I'm delighted to see so many distinguished guests and friends. I want to thank especially the planning committee for all their hard work in making today happen, especially Dr. Connie Hales from the English Department, Professor Emeriti Linnea Alexander, Chuck Hanslicek, Peter Everwine, Special Assistant to the Provost Jose Diaz, Interior Design Faculty Member Imelda Golick. Will you give them a round of applause, please? I too want to acknowledge Philip Levine's family, especially Fran, 
beautiful sons. Thank you for sharing, Philip, with all of us, and thank you for all of the contributions that you have made to Fresno State. Today we honor Philip Levine, one of the most leading poetic voices of this generation, one that led to his appointment as the 18th U.S. Poet Laureate. He has had an enormous impact on the lives and careers of generations of poets, many of whom will be sharing their personal stories later in the program. We're proud that we had such a prominent faculty member at Fresno State, someone who is a true icon in the literary world. He truly helped our Fresno State community be put on the map. As you can tell, Philip Levine's legacy continues to play a vital role at our university. He was a man who spent his life being the first, even before he was first to give a voice in poetry to mid 20th century factory workers and others who labor to keep food on the table. First born in a set of identical twins to Russian Jewish immigrants. First in his family to earn a college degree at Wayne State in Detroit. First job out of college in the automotive industry, but he didn't stay. First job in academia at Fresno State, where he taught in the English department from 1958 until 1992. First book of poetry, On the Edge, published in 1963. First for Fresno State, earned by Professor Levine included the Guggenheim Fellowship in 1973, the National Book Award in 1991 for What Work Is, the Pulitzer Prize in Poetry in 1995 for The Simple Truth, and U.S. Poet Laureate in 2011 and 12, an honor now held by another Fresno State professor, Juan Felipe Herrera. Though first to give a voice in poetry to mid-20th century factory workers, according to scholars perhaps even closer to his idealistic young heart, were heroes of the Spanish Civil War, and the tomb of one he com commemorates thus. For two, there are floral displays, but Escasio faces eternity with only a stone. Maybe as it should be, he was a stone and a blade, the first grinding and sharpening the other. We might see that Professor Philip Levine also was a stone, first to sharpen all of us here at Fresno State. May his legacy of art, poetry, and humanity, and his respect for hard work live on in all of us. Thank you.